All right, we are here to see something pretty cool. My name is John Mueller. I'm the art director of Diablo 4. Uh, we're gonna, uh, typically at BlizzCon, we get the artists together uh, at uh, the BlizzCon artist stage and uh, fans can watch us draw and ask us questions while we do it. Of course, we can't do that this year, but we didn't wanna, you know, we thought, well, how could we actually make this experience possibly even better? So uh, I got together with the concept team, we talked about it, and we came up with this idea, uh, which is that we are going to draw, uh, we, we basically have pre-drawn a, a, a subject for you, and then uh, we're gonna comment on it together uh, with the artist and myself. So it's a little bit of a preview of how we work and the things we talk about even, you know, while we're doing this kind of work. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's sort of like a backstage pass to, the, to what it's like being a concept artist on the Diablo 4 team. So um, uh, first, you know, being the art director, you know, I think that I, uh, I have the privilege of working with some of the most talented artists in the world. Um, and so what I try to do is really just sort of bring the best out of that group, but really they are the source of the inspiration and the vision for this project. So um, uh, we're gonna show some art to you now because we've shown, you know, we, we also have the gallery that we, we show often at BlizzCon. So um, I'm gonna talk about the artists a little bit. Uh, you know, first, Victor Lee is the lead concept artist on Diablo 4. Uh, Victor Lee has worked uh, for Blizzard for over 15 years. He worked on Diablo 2, II, Diablo 3, and Diablo 4. Vic is sort of like the heart and soul of the Diablo concept team. Um, and, you know, you're going to see some images going by and you'll probably recognize a lot of them because he's been, you know, he's worked on so many amazing images for Diablo. Uh, you know, next we have... Uh, Igor Sidorenko, who is a new member of the team, you saw a lot of his work last year at BlizzCon. Some of those amazing Renaissance style paintings. Um, uh, Igor joined us in the last few years and uh, he's been just, you know, brought so much vision and, and passion to the project. Um, it's really been, uh, you know, I think a pleasure for all of us to see, you know, sort of how he's, how he's brought this sort of return to darkness and, and this new vision for Diablo 4 to life. Uh, Konstantin Vavilov also joined us uh, in the last few years. Konstantin is, uh, helps us on a lot of our world building. And, you know, when you see the open world and there's different locations and sort of bringing those areas to life. So, you know, the, we call them culture kits. Uh, you might have the cultist culture kit or the goat man culture kit. This is how we talk about these things. It's kind of like their little grab bag of like their, you know, the, the, the furniture catalog for the, for the, for these monster families. Uh, you know, uh, Constantine's the person that brings all of that to life. Uh, and of course, Hyun Lee is uh, a new member of the team. Uh, uh, we, we hired Hyun out of college. Um, he has been a, a fantastic addition to the team and really has, uh, is just killing it on so many different things. He works on, he works on culture kits also, but he's also done some amazing monsters for us um, that uh, we're gonna show some concepts of uh, probably scrolling by as I'm, as I'm talking. There's also Richie Morella, who's the lead artist on the project, and Richie oversees most of the pre-production assets for the game. So a lot of times I'll work with Richie and then Richie will work with the concept team to, to you know, generate uh, uh, pretty much all the concepts for the game. Some really beautiful stuff, especially some of the, you know, uh, some of the bosses and things that he, he comes up with too. All right, so we're gonna dive into this now. And uh, I wanna introduce Rob Sevilla. Uh, Rob. Uh, hey everyone. Yeah. Rob, uh, you've been with Blizzard for how long now? Um, a little over 15 years, maybe 16 or 17. I I've lost count. <laughs> and uh, Rob has worked on World of Warcraft as well and joined us on Diablo 4 a few years back. Um, and uh, so Rob, this is going to be a pretty typical day in the life of a concept artist, right? That's correct. Yeah, usually um, the way we would work is uh, we would get a task and we would, uh, you know, um, meet with a designers and we would meet with John and uh, the rest of the concept artists and it would idea jam. And basically after idea jamming, then comes like the sketching phase. And, and I, th I believe we're gonna show it right now. All right, let's dive right into it. All right, just warming up here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just well, you got up your here. scale reference. That's the first thing you, ha <laughs> you have to have, right? You gotta know like you got your little guy there. It's definitely important to have scale, especially if you're designing like a monster boss, just because you wanna be able to see the, the size of this creature when there's a player. Yeah, I think it's one of the things we talk about a lot is our camera, our game camera is so important, um, you know, to consider. So, you know, scale, uh, game camera. I noticed you named it right away. Did you already have that kind of, like, did you start with like, 
like did you did you go like because uh, the task was like you know create a uh, create a boss for diablo did the the term hive mother pop into your head first or was it an image actually uh before this actual sketch phase uh we i did do a brainstorming phase and uh when i'm doing that brainstorming phase that's when um you know i try to think about the idea but because i'm not drawing it and instead i'm just kind of writing things down there's not a lot of pressure to kind of design you know uh, there's no pressure to draw because you're really not drawing you're just jotting down your ideas and it just kind of helps kind of get like the the thoughts going in your in your head as you're kind of like working through it um so usually i'll start with a brainstorm um and it's usually like a, i think a lot you know even in uh high school when you do like a creative writing class it's that same thing where you you have like a little bubble and you kind of like uh, have little uh, ideas that kind of stem from that uh, so that kind of help organize your thoughts uh, and then from there uh, I would grab reference from uh, you know kind of help support the idea that I've already developed in that brainstorm and so after about doing that maybe I, I probably spent about a, a few hours just doing that phase uh, and then once I have like an idea in my head, I'll, I'll go ahead and start sketching. Yeah, see, I, I think, I, you know, it's, I, I love that we're doing this because I, I hope to demystify uh, somewhat, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, as the art director, people will ask me, you know, like, how do you come up with a vision for Diablo? Uh, or, you know, th that kind of question. And, and I'm always very like, well, really the vision comes from, you know, the team, you know, because, you, you know, you are essentially you know, that whole process you talked about, you're filling your head with all these images and references and you're writing, you're kind of coming up with like what we call a creative brief. Um, and so all I said to Rob was, hey, Rob, we need to do a dungeon boss uh, for, 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 you know, and, and you can do it with any monster family you want. And then, you know, the concept artists are really going through and building their own story and vision in their head of what they want to try to pitch, right? Um, ultimately, we, with this sketch phase that we're going to show today, um, and this is going to be in two parts. We're doing the sketch phase today, and then the 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 next the next uh, I, I guess we call it an episode. The next part of this is that uh, we're going to show the render. So you'll kind of see the process through uh, through the whole thing, start to finish. Is uh, you know we do sketches, and then we you typically do a few sketches, and you know uh, uh, you know we'll talk about it and pick one, and then we go to a final uh, like a final render. Yeah. Um, so Rob, this uh, this uh, the, the the hive mother. Did you choose the spider family? Was that like did you already know that, or did you start drawing like okay, I'm going to do a spider, I'm going to do a, a a boss for the spider family, or did you like w what came first there? Um, so yeah, we had a few um, uh, monster families to kind of choose from, uh, and I think for me, I wanted to challenge myself with coming up because uh, you know the spider family, if you think of a spider boss, like the first thing that would pop in your head would be, oh, I'll just design a giant spider. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things in our team, uh, one of our pillars for a concept team is always uh, pushing the boundaries. And so like for me, that was like a challenge to like, okay, how can I come up with a spider boss, but not give like your, uh, you know, your first answer is like, oh, I'm just going to make a giant spider. Uh, and so, you know, uh, you know, I, I wanted to create like this. What if like this spider um, uh, boss was literally the actual hive? It's literally a walking egg sack, you know, and it, it, that and we know when I wrote that down, uh, all these kind of like uh, images started popping in my head um, and, you know, like just kind of like that idea jamming and just, uh, I guess, like churning those words, because I mean, in the end, like as a concept artist, like your, your main job is to convert like ideas from the designer or your own ideas and then kind of uh, problem solve them visually. And so that in the end, you'll have something, a, a visual answer to the problem. Um, and so, yeah, like the, the main idea was that I wanted to create a, a, a creature that felt like it was literally spawning all the spider families from it. Um, and what better way than to show like, hey, this thing actually is a giant walking egg sack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's that something a... that, you know, like we, you know, we, we jam on with design as well. Like, you know, this would be something you might pitch to Joe Shelley and, and you know, and then he might add some thoughts to it. And it might that might also evolve it. Right. I think 
one of the things that, uh, you know, at Blizzard, you know, we're incredibly collaborative. Um, we really believe that ideas can come from anywhere. And so, you know, we really uh, try to get everybody involved as, you know, early and, and get feedback. And, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, the artists really think about the gameplay, right, Rob? Like, that's something you guys, yep. you guys are always thinking about gameplay, like having the, the kind of a monster spawner on a monster. It's a great idea for a boss. Uh, that's definitely one thing we we definitely I try to address is, you know, if this creature is, uh, you know, one of the things I learned when I was going to art school was that uh, the idea of like, uh, you almost have to uh, listen to your kind of yourself that if it makes it, if the idea makes you excited, then it'll show through your drawing. And so for me, when I was designing this hive mother, it got me excited to think about how would I fight this boss? Like, uh, you know, like all the different uh, boss attacks or the different possibilities, uh, you know, I, that I would need to do to fight this boss. And so a lot of the decisions come from uh, thinking about those kinds of like elements when you're when when I'm designing a creature. Yeah, I think that's, um, you know, the the amount of reference and, and research that, you know, you guys do. I mean, I know I, I see you, you do uh, things called mood boards, right? That's where you kind of you'll put a, a collection of reference together, right? That's a, kind of a touch point for you. Um, so like that, that mood ref is just a bunch of like different images that would kind of, I guess like the short answer would be to just get your juices going, right? Uh, when you're designing, you definitely want to be inspired uh, and you definitely um, uh, want to have a, like a source of inspiration when you're designing. So, and as an artist, like you want those visual images to be next to you as you're designing so you're constantly thinking about these things yeah i think um you know that's something that uh like a lot of times when people ask us about art or like you know how we create it i think that um you know the greatest teacher is just real world like what like i, I like i always say like when we're designing armor um or something that is that, that we can look at real world, world reference because that armor was probably crafted by sp someone who spent their entire life learning how to do you know be an excellent craftsperson in art and a lot of times we draw so many things on any given day that this may be the first time we've ever done this this you know type of armor or or this type of thing and so it's great to look at real world references like well that was a master craftsperson who did that or just the organic design of an actual spider and you know like or i mean it, it's amazing when you really look at the details of things of just how how well thought out it is and, and, and visually, you know, beautiful to, 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 to use as reference. Um, I, you know, Rob, I, I don't know if you feel like this. I feel like when I just draw from my head, I miss so many details that I, I would have added if I just would have done a little bit of reference and research. Absolutely. It's one of those where, uh, if you ask someone right now to draw like a telephone, it's like, you can draw a telephone, but I feel like it would miss the, the, uh, the believability of it, uh, unless you had an actual phone right next to you, and you can just literally draw that phone as you, you know, uh, the way you, the way it's, you know, it is in real life, and it's way more convincing uh, after that. Um, so actually, in this uh, second drawing here, I really like how um, the 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 upper the upper torso and uh, the legs were working. It felt really creepy to me. To me, it has this um, creepiness about it, but. Uh, but here I'm solving, like, how do I add, like, the spider part where it's like a big egg sac? So here I'm just kind of playing around with the abdomen and finding a different solution, but still trying to keep, like, the, uh, the original hunch over kind of approach to this creature. Yeah, it kind of looks like you're adding, like, uh, you know, like a lot of times when we do variants, right? Like, you have an idea that you like but you don't want to just present one image, right? Like you, you, you usually, like I know with your work, you always show me three or four ideas. Uh, usually it's on a theme, but you'll kind of show me like, oh, different ways that we could approach it. And then we'll talk about the mechanics of it um, and kind of pro con some of those choices. Um, you know, like I think the, 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 the first sketch, uh, you know, it looks like you're adding the abdomen now. It's more on the ground with this one. Yes. You know, and so like what we would talk about with this typically would be like, okay, well, you know, like a spider and an abdomen elevated off the ground for our game camera, for also how how turning works in our game. Can we make the turn feel believable if the weight is sitting on the ground, right? Because it's like, now it's she's dragging it as opposed to like she's she's carrying it with her own, uh, her own like 
structure. Right. Uh, I think in this in this in this sense, I definitely because um, we have like those weekly meetings where we show our progress. Yeah. Um, and then we'll have like uh, and the animators will take a look at it. Um, you know, technical artists will take a look at it. The designers will take a look at it. You'll take a look at it. So we'll have like a bunch of different uh, input, uh, and then we will kind of help start molding this creature. So it's never quite like you know, like you start something, uh, and then all of a sudden, like it's done. Yeah. You know, it's it goes through like this, um, um, you know, this uh, iterative, iterative, uh, iterative process of like, you know, going from idea to final. And on, on any given thing, you're getting feedback from a lot of different people. Um, you know, like they're not just artists, they are technical artists, like the technical animators who have to rig and, and skin, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. This. I, try, I try to get them mad at me. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> they're like, we can't, <laughs> how are we going to do that, right? Like they are they are geniuses, though, in that they figure out how to do, uh, they figure out how to do the, the, we do a lot of simulations on our models with. Um, yes. Uh, cloth they're, and things that things that move. Uh, yes, they're pretty incredible at like trying to like, hey, we really want to make sure your concept, you know, comes across all the way to the end. You know, what can we do to kind of help? You know, like, hey, you want this jiggly feature? Like, how can we make that happen? So, like things like that are like, you know, it it's kind of a back and forth process. You know, and it's very organic, which is really awesome because uh, you know you'll come up with an idea and then see if how you know if, if things how it might work and then you know you'll have other people help you out so it's, it's really awesome in terms of like how kind of an idea develops all the way from beginning to end you know i i can already tell by looking at the drawing we would be talking about how to add like the the you talked about the jiggle type bones into the the abdomen to really get that <laughs> yeah. that feeling that there's like a hive in there wiggling around you know <laughs> yeah or even like those little postules could have like be pulsating you know, uh, just different ideas of like, if a player is there, you know, I wonder if like the player fought this uh, world boss, uh, like would it, w would their weakness be if you can get them to turn around and then you hit them from the back? You know, like those kinds of ideas are always so um, interesting to me because, you know, it definitely, it these looks will definitely design, will definitely drive the, the gameplay, I think, and vice versa. I mean, if obviously if the designers want something like, hey, we really want this specific, like, part in the fight like you as a concept artist you have to you have to make sure you address that yeah i think uh you know like uh, i mean already looking at it I, I you know i'm wondering like yeah in the second stage of the fight could could she detach you know like you basically oh have yeah you've damaged the <laughs> the hive so much the, the the her abdomen you know she can't she's no longer spawning uh uh mobs at you uh so yeah. like does, <laughs> does she detach from it and now she's really fast and skittery right I had this moment of like, oh man, she she pulls herself off the off the hive, and now she's more dangerous. And you know, it just also just what a gory, cool moment that would be, yeah. be to see, right? I, I always try to think about when I'm designing as well is kind of like memorable moments, uh, things that feel like okay, like like what you said, like oh man, that would be so gross if you're fighting this monster, and on the second stage, she like rips apart from her uh, abdomen, and then now she's fighting this like the abdomen has exploded and there's like you know a hundred spiders on the ground and at the same yeah. time you're trying to you know keep this boss away from you um so yeah like I, there's definitely a lot of uh, pop culture reference that i because you know as a as an artist like you're inspired by other people um and it's just always cool to just kind of use that as um as a jumping off point to kind of like get you get your idea started as well yeah we always put our spin on it it's just a it's just a it's so, it's like a, a visual language that we use sometimes when we're just talking about something you know like this or like that um you know and it and it's a way for us to to share a vision you know to sort of like refine it because i've always found that that it always starts in this very raw form and and we'll talk about this when you start rendering like even going from a sketch that you love to a final render right like that's always hard because there's an energy right. that was in the sketch that's somehow hard to capture uh yeah it's definitely like i think that's one of the challenges that like, even now i still struggle with is just making how do i bring the sketch to life um yeah i mean it's a lot of it is just like <laughs> you know like trying stuff out i mean thank god you know photoshop's here where you're no longer trying to do this concept on paper. I, I would think I, I I don't know if where I would be if I had to do this traditionally. Like I, I have to give it up to traditional artists that can do this. 
because like you know with the power of, of photoshop you can easily edit things and adjust things and it's so much more forgiving yeah let's talk about uh, the sort of some of the tools of the trade a little bit here because people are just probably watching these lines magically appear on screen and they're wondering like how is that happening? Um, you use uh, a device, you use a tablet, which is a uh, has a, a stylus and a, and, a, and a tablet, and then you're using Photoshop um, as the as the software on your computer. And then you're also you can see these layers that you're you're adding layers in to do kind of like so that you can have like uh, you might have one drawing like on a, a safe layer. Spot. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you might copy it to another something like that, right? Yes. Um, so like, uh, you know, I, I use uh, Wacom Cintiq, which is like this really awesome device that you can, uh, you know, you can, it's one of these where you have like this little pen and then you draw on the screen like you were drawing on paper. Um, I think that kind of technology really helps bridge that gap between like a traditional art to digital art. Um, and then, you know, um, using Photoshop here and at the same time, there's uh, the power of Photoshop with the layers. It's almost like your uh, layers give you the ability to, you know, to feel safe about making mistakes. <laughs> Cause you can always, you know, because it's on another layer, you can always get rid of it. You know, you can always erase and it, it would never affect the other, the other things that are on other layers. So it's definitely like a safer uh, a way of approaching the things. And, and you know, like what I did on the, uh, the hunched over version, where I just took that same layer and I copied it. So I didn't have to draw another hunch creature. I'll just use that and I'll just change the, the abdomen, you know, in this, for this example. Um, and that was like, you know, half, half the work was already done because I had already previously drawn it. Yeah. So like, uh, it's, uh, what's going on here? It looks like this is now a vertical type of design. Like what, <laughs> what, 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 uh, tell us about what, what, what we're seeing. Yeah, so in this one, uh, earlier in the beginning of the sketch, I had pulled up a reference and it's, um, I believe uh, the reference was the uh, Venus of uh, Willemdorf. Uh, and it's like this, uh, uh, I guess this uh, figure of like this goddess of fertility. Yeah, I think it's a fertility that, statue. It was like, it was really old. Uh, I mean, yes. it's like, it's like a, I've seen that in museums before or like. Yes, and so it's got this feeling of like, oh my gosh, like, it's almost like a giving birth to a set of monsters. So that's in this that's case. interesting because that is a fertility goddess, and I know that like it's a, it's sort of a mother type figure, you know, like and so that's interesting that you would use that as a you know this sort of like this uh, you know beautiful antiquity from you know centuries of uh, ago to inspire <laughs> this. It, I mean, part of you know being a concept artist, you have to be able to take uh, inspiration and then you know kind of how. Uh, you mentioned like we put it through uh, the Diablo for looking glass and a big part of it is, you know, you know, it, it, it is that it's like I love the idea. I remember coming into the team and one of the pillars was return to darkness. I have that for me, that is always stuck. And so every time I look at a reference, I'm always asking myself, how can I make this reference darker? <laughs> so, yeah. yes. So here's there's the Venus of Willendorf. And then I was like, OK, how can I use that <laughs> reference? and just give this disgusting like feel. And you know, obviously spiders, at least for me, spiders are already pretty disgusting. Yeah. So. Are you scared like, of spiders? Hey, is that a, is spider that a real, is it. that a real life phobia? Uh, I, 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 yes, yes. I remember one time going to Nicaragua and going for a hike and leaving our, our door open because it was hot, not realizing that by the time we came back at night, there'd be spiders everywhere. Oh no. <laughs> so you're channeling uh, your trauma oh, absolutely. While, while, absolutely. while you're drawing. This is all about recalling memory and inspiration. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, yeah, and for me, like, I love the idea. I just kept playing around with the idea of the, the word hive mother, like hive mother. How do I make this feel like, you know, it's like this um, goddess of like the spider family. Yeah. And so are, are you thinking about the environment as well? Like, I mean, are, you know, I know that we do this sometimes with, you know, like we, we're concepting a creature, but we're also thinking about like what's around, what's what, you know, a lot of times in Diablo, you, you come into an arena, right? It's it's when the corridor, yes. it's when the corridor goes straight and you're like, oh, wait, this is I know what this is. <laughs> uh, for this particular creature, because I know uh, that we were designing a world boss and yeah. I, I believe uh, the world bosses can spawn anywhere. And so for me, like the environment wasn't so much um, an issue, 
more so than I wanted to design a creature that would contrast from the other world bosses that we've already designed. So we have like one world boss that might have four legs, another world boss that might have, you know, that might be bipedal. So I wanted to create another uh, world boss that felt like it was, um, it would carry a contrast on the other bosses so that it was just as memorable, you know, because I think in the end, like you want to make sure this boss fight because it's going to be encountered by so many different people that it would, uh, it, it should be memorable. Yeah, I, I think that's something, you know, I know I, I, I do this a lot whenever, and this is pretty much across the board with like, whether it's a, a new dungeon that we're doing or a new, a new, uh, new creatures, you know, you're always sort of adding to the library of what already exists. And so you don't want to, you don't want to, you, you don't want to repeat yourself or you, 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 you know, you, you're, you're always trying to, you know, what, what is the, what is something we haven't done yet? Um, it, uh, like, I feel like that's something we talk about when we're doing, uh, when we're doing this a lot. Uh, we pretty much talk about, it, I think all the time, yeah. <laughs> we're always trying to reach out, like, how can we push the boundary, right? How can we push like this design so that it's separate from the other designs from, that we have already done in the past? Or how does, how do we make this creature different from other creatures? Um, you know, not just through color, uh, and and shape, but also in like behavior and how you fight this boss or how you fight this creature, you know, the different types of like contrasting, you know, is this creature might be better for range fighters versus than like a melee, it, you know, it could be where versus where, whereas other bosses, it might be better for melee than range. Yeah. The, usually, you know, it's, it's at this point when we do sketches that will, you know, this is like, this is the first thing that, that, that a concept artist will show the art director, uh, the design director, um, and, you know, like uh, Joe Shelley, who's our, our you know, it, it pretty much in, it, uh, has given us uh, direction on all the, the monster fights, or most of them, um, you know, uh, like th you'd show it to Joe and you'd get notes from him and he would be, he would be sort of filling in like, okay, what the attacks might be. Um, and things like that. So, I mean, I think that's like, that is how we collaborate at Blizzard, right? It's sort of like, a, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you know, we do something and then they give us feedback and then we take that feedback and then we'll do another version, right? So like probably, you know, we do this for real, you know, we'd probably have an, a couple iterations here on these sketches, right? Yeah, it's, it's even one of those where uh, the sketch might spawn, might give Joe an idea yeah. Like, oh, I didn't think about it, you know, because of that, that sketch might have brought some idea there. And so, like, that kind of organic collaboration is really, I think it's super healthy for a team. Right. You know, like, it's definitely, like, you feel like, you know, as somebody who can, as a collaboration, because I feel like a lot of, like, if you're designing something, uh, it's always better to have, you know, two heads are always better than one. And so, like, whenever you have a group of people kind of uh, attacking and trying to come up with a solution to the problem is a much better than if you just had one guy working on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's something that, um, you know, it's like uh, when you start doing this for a living, um, you know, like Rob, you draw eight hours a day, right? I draw at work. I draw after work. <laughs> I go, I mean, even working from home, yeah. I'm like on Discord, right. uh, those digital sketch groups all the time. Yeah, draw, and, draw, draw all the time. <laughs> and I think that's something that I mean, you know, I, like I remember when I was when I was starting out. I mean, and I, I feel like when I went, I, you know, I went to art school as well. And I, I remember when I was like, I had drawn an, an art class and things like that, but it was only like for an hour or two at a time. You know, I'd go home and I'd draw at night, but I didn't really start like, you know, you, you start to become like you're almost like a. I don't say like an athlete or something where it's like, this is your, this becomes your life. Um, you, you are drawing all the time. Uh, and it, and it really becomes like a, a thing that, um, you, you know, you're, you're spending most of your time doing this. Right. So it's a, it, it but it, that's a learned thing, right? You, that, that, you, you, you know, that that's hard to imagine for a lot of people, like just sit down and draw for eight hours. Right. Cause that's like, wait, eight hours. Are you kidding? Like, do you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I think it's definitely, I think it's important. There's a couple of things like, so one is, I think it's important to think about it that not every drawing is going to be a masterpiece, right? Like you, sh you should always think about it where, okay, I'm just going to draw and I'm just going to draw for fun and there shouldn't be any pressure and just draw, you know, like that should, that's always like, uh, at least for me, when I do that, it always helps a lot and always kind of like, um, you know, helps me 
figure things out because there's no pressure when I'm drawing. Uh, and then the second would be you, you definitely want to find a group of people to draw with. You know, I think it's super, it's super awesome when you can like, you know, draw with five other people that you draw better than you so you can learn from them and you know you 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 pick up things that they do so that's that's always really awesome as well so yeah that that peer that peer group to like Absolutely. you know critique and give feedback like you know there, there's definitely this thing of like um you know when we start drawing and i remember this kind of being young like you know you're kind of like this right like you don't want anybody to see it because it's not done or, it's <laughs> yeah. not, or you don't think it's any good right <laughs> Um, and then, uh, when you start doing this professionally, when you go to, you know, when you start like drawing more and more and, and, and doing it at this level, you're actually showing it all the time. And, you know, you, you kind of, you, it, it's like you remove that fear uh, and doubt around, you know, like, uh, you know, like, oh gosh, like be, being uh, nervous or defensive about the work, right? Like, like we invite criticism, we want feedback. Um, like it's something we're always showing our work and asking for people like, what do you think? You know, um, and they don't have to be artists. They don't have to be, they can like, we want to know what players would think. Um, you know, so we really try to listen. Like I, I, you know, we've been doing these blog updates. Um, and I read, I read, I read so much stuff when we do these blog updates about what people are saying, because I want to know, like, like what's their mm -hmm. reaction. I, I believe in yeah. this, this philosophy of like the wisdom of crowds, which is like, you know, if enough people are saying a thing there's something there for you to think about. Um, <laughs> you Absolutely. Know, it doesn't mean that you should always be driven or directed by it, but, but you know, it's like, hey, if, if, if you know, three uh, of 10 people make a comment about like, you know, feeling like, you know, good or bad about a particular thing, that's something I might want to elevate if it's a good thing, right? Like somebody's mm -hmm. like, oh man, that's so, cre that egg abdomen is so creepy. Uh, you know, and then you think, oh, well, how do we plus that? How do we make that even, even creepier, right? Yeah, so definitely, that, those are definitely things to consider, uh, you know, when you're in the design process. Um, yeah, so in this particular one here, you know, I was thinking of, you know, um, you know how, how would this thing crawl on the ground? And it just, to me, just the slithering idea of like how a centipede might crawl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like... C uh, you know, it centipedes, like the, right? Like, the, it's like they're, they're <laughs> the, one of the most like terrifying creatures on the yes. planet because they have poisonous legs they have poisonous like they're all they have <laughs> they have artillery front and back yeah. and they have a uh what you know just tons of legs and they're, and they're super fast they're super fast <laughs> they're it, it's i we, we uh, i lived in texas for for uh, uh 12 years and oh they no. had red-headed centipedes there and they would be they would grow as long as, as they could be as long as your your arm they're like the giant uh desert centipedes yeah like those guys and, right oh they are just we had we would have them in our house and stuff and they were just like oh my the, God. like like yeah i I have a whole story that I could tell about like when we when we moved into our house and we realized it was infested with redheaded centipedes. We did not sleep very well. Oh I can tell my you that. god. Well, so this drawing that you're you're doing now, so this is actually that that more horizontal design and this is the one yes. right like the animators are going to like they're going to have some stress about, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this one I had originally wanted to design it. I mean, it's, you know, so the idea was it still needs to like the spider family, it still needs to feel arachnid, but at the same time like I started to kind of push the idea of like, you know, like just giving it more legs just feels way creepier. Yeah. And, but then I also knew that I think the uh, <laughs> the technical artists might get really mad and the animators because then they'd have to animate like, I don't know however many legs I put on this guy. Yeah. That's always, I mean, it's something that we will always have these ideas that, you know, we I, I don't think we let it limit us, but we like we do grow an awareness of you know, when we're doing something that might sort of be a technical challenge for the for the team. Yes. Yeah. But it's so uh, to me, it looks it sounds it would be so cool if I was finding this creature and yeah. it could like go around you and it's around you in a circle, you yeah. know, and then you're pretty much <laughs> who knows. Right. But it's like that idea of like this thing kind of, uh, you know, uh, doing S shapes around the player, you know, it could have like burrows. On the ground it could like dive in you don't know where it's coming from and it could like pop out and it could like um you know just act like this super fast creature even though it's you know it's even though it's i don't Huge. know like a hundred times bigger than a normal yeah player. yeah i love the burrow idea i mean burrowing really works in diablo right because it creates an area of denial um yeah and it also like you know gives you that moment of like oh like you know where's where's it going to come up next 
That's cool. Um, <laughs> what's the, uh, you know, with the, you know, you think about the, the environment um, that this, uh, that this is in, like, what would you imagine? Like, you know, the, the, so this is a world boss. So this is in the open world in Diablo four, you will encounter world bosses. Um, they are mm -hmm. specific, there are specific areas within the world where world bosses will spawn. Um, they're, uh, group events, uh, typically. Uh, so you want to have some, 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 uh, friends to help you with these cause they're really tough. Um, but I, you know, some also give you some, a nice chance for a legendary drop. So, um, always a <laughs> worthwhile investment of time. Uh, do you like, you know, we, we do, we do add props sometimes for like to kind of help with the narrative. So it's not just like there's, you're not spawning on a, on a blank piece of terrain. Um, you know, what, what would you add to the environment? Do you think, like, what, what are you thinking about? Um, I think for me, I mean, I, I would love the idea of kind of like how a funnel web spider is, you know, how, when you see their, or, um, trapdoor spider even where you see their nest and it's just like the ground is just covered with um, this like webbing so I could imagine as a player when I'm running around I, I start to notice like hey wait a minute there's a little there's a little bit more extra webbing everywhere uh, you know and the deeper you get yeah. the more spiders you encounter and it just feels like you're starting to go inside this nest mm -hmm. you know I guess kind of like that in that movie aliens where Sigourney Weaver goes through and it's just like you can tell she's going deeper and deeper into like this disgusting dark place. Well, we did it with Ashava where we kind of had this like sp this spawning uh, effect where it was like, look, we tried oh, to- right, right. Yeah, we tried to make that thing. It sort of felt like a, a portal into like whatever the gooey dimension of the, 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 her, the yeah. demonic <laughs> evilness that Ashava comes from. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I could imagine doing something like this with like, you know, it would be like, uh, you know, webbing and that trapdoor spider thing of like, you know, it builds anticipation, right? Like when you're, cause a lot of the events you're there and you're waiting for them to pop off because you get a, you know, you get like a, like, oh, I see a world events going off. And, um, these are such cool events in the game. I mean, I've played a ton of them and it's just, it's, it's really fun because, you know, you see other, you get to see other people and kind of what they're what they're about and it's like oh we got a druid we got a we got a sorcerer uh you know uh, uh now we can say we have a rogue um and uh and so you get this mix of uh classes and and different people at different levels and and you know how everybody's gonna you know do their part uh in this kind of fight um so we you know it's fu it's fun to do effects that build the anticipation so i love the idea of like a trapdoor spider like as a spawning like that yeah. feeling of like it's going to come from the ground and you what's know, the scale of it too? Imagine like if you saw, because <clears throat> you're so used to seeing a trapdoor spider would be like a small size, but then if you saw one that was like took half your screen, yeah, yeah, it kind of it kind of gets you a feeling like oh, okay, something's gonna come out here. <laughs> yeah. So at this at this stage, you have four drawings that you've kind of sketched up. Are, are you gonna add uh, a little bit of gray value here? I know sometimes you do that. Uh, yes, I'll usually add like a basic color palette just because I want to be able to figure out, kind of start thinking in my head of uh, some color choices uh, uh, that I'll be exploring. Um, and then also because like, I think for me, the, the, the bloated idea of, of, of a, you know, the bloated uh, with egg sacs in it, that bloated form uh, was uh, important for me to address. So I wanted to make sure that, okay, like I'm gonna add like a darker value that, and then uh, around it, and it would be frame, you know, like it would be the lighter value with the, the bloated, the form will be, the bloated form will be lighter value, but then it would be surrounded by a darker value to kind of help pop it. Yeah. The, you know, the vertical one is so interesting to me because I'm, I'm trying to imagine, like, is it standing on, like, what is it, how is it, how is it, how is it in the air like that? Is, is it, are those? I had, a, I had originally imagined it like being strung with like webs. So oh. it's almost like it's suspended yeah. by like its own like uh, uh, own structure of like webbing. So it could like kind of come in and out and come off screen from up top or something. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Now you just did something and I know this is something that I do all the time too. Tell people what you just did there. Uh, I wasn't sure. <laughs> you flipped it. Why oh, did you I flip it? Why? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I flip every now and then just because like, it gives your eye like a refreshing view on things because sometimes yeah. you get so used to seeing it one way that when you flip it, you'll start to see inconsistencies like you might your perspective might be off or your symmetry might feel weird. 
And so flipping it always kind of gives you a fresh eye. It's like, it's like similar to like if you had walked away for a day and come back yeah. and see the drawing again. Right. It's, uh, you know, flipping is a, when you, you know, it's like, cause you, I, I, and I'm sure there's some smart people out there that know why it happens. I think it has something to do with like, um, you know, your dominant eye, uh, or dominant handedness sort of, it gives you uh, like it, it, you draw differently or you draw a certain way because of it. And then when you flip it, it like causes you to like, Oh, I'm now seeing it kind of like yep. with fresh eyes. Yeah, I, I catch all kinds of proportion problems. Like, it, and you'll definitely <laughs> notice, like, if you try to draw a face. So, if you draw a human face, and then you look at it, and turn around, and put it in the mirror, you'll see, like, oh, it's lopsided. So, you know, like I remember that's just something that, like, you, you, you know, like you, it when you don't flip stuff, you notice things get lopsided for yeah, whatever and, and, reason. I mean, the thing is, like, you know, you know, we've been drawing for years and years and years, like over a decade. You know, I could probably say I've been drawing for probably. 20 years. Yeah. Um, and I still, you know, I still run to the same problems. I bet your mom would say you've been drawing for a lot longer. She'd be like, I have your drawings I'm, on the I'm pretty old. You, you, you had the hive drawing, the hive mother when you were, you, you know, the first version <laughs> when you were, you drew when you were five. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty sure like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to reveal my age, but. <laughs> did you, uh, did you always draw like, kind of like, uh, like, did you always draw like dark, creepy stuff? Like what did you, when you were, wh when you started drawing, oh, like, like, how did you, uh, w when did you realize you were like, you know, uh, unusually talented in this area? I, I think I just love drawing things. I like, I, I remember drawing cars, uh, spaceships, lots of spaceships when I was a kid. Um, I think part of it is when, when, you know, when you grew up. And then I, I remember for me uh, playing Diablo for the first time. It was one of those games where I had to like wait till my parents were out of the house before I played it, because because sure. I, I grew up Catholic, and my parents are, are, are you know, they're not as uh, religious anymore. But I, it's one of those games where you don't want your parents to catch <laughs> you playing that game. We hear that a lot. <laughs> so I think for me, yeah. that exposure early on kind of really helped drive, like, kind of how I see things. And obviously, like, watching a lot of horror movies, and I love, like, creature feature movies. Those are so cool. And then meeting other artists that do the same thing. And so I think for me, I kind of like, you know, I like to do, you know, all kinds of drawings, but uh, there's definitely a special place about dark fantasy for me to just like hits at the right spot. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's true of all the concept artists on our team, right? Like, I, and I, and yeah, like, they have a dark passenger somewhere. Yeah. We, we even say like, I mean, and, and a, a lot of them were inspired by different Diablo games. I know like um, when, uh, uh, you know, when uh, Igre talks about uh, Diablo 2, you know, and the sort of he was he was so inspired by the weapons and the sort of because he found out that like a lot of them were based on real, real design, um, you know, but I, I, I love hearing the different, you know, how different artists on the team talk about like their first Diablo game. It's almost a universal thing of like, you know, we're, all, you know, Diablo has been around long enough now where we all have our our first memories of, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. playing playing Diablo, <laughs> right? <laughs> that game. That game, I mean, it really does affect you when you're, when you're, you know, young and you see it for the first time. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I mean, you know, I've had the, the gamer tag. Like I've always used Das Butcher uh, as a gamer tag. And, oh yeah. And it's just because I couldn't get the butcher, you know, because it was like everybody wants to be the butcher. But I was like, well, you know. Uh, but it was, it's just, it was such an impactful uh, thing when I played Diablo, uh, for the first time, and I just, I, you know, games were still fairly. Um, you know, they were fairly simplistic back then, you know, and, and this was just so dark and, and, and unlike anything else at the time. Yep. <laughs> uh, right. And so I, I just, I, I've, I, you know, all these years later is to, to be art directing Diablo four, you know, is, is really, I still kind of like have these moments of really like, wow, that's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, dude, like we get to work from home and work on these amazing IP, yeah. you know, with some amazing artists. I mean, I can't, I can't really complain. I feel like I'm spoiled actually. <laughs> yeah, we do get to draw some really like, like I, I feel like the concept artists uh, have a pretty, uh, it's, it's a pretty fun, it's a pretty fun group and we have a lot of fun. And it's, it's, I know our concept reviews, it's always like we're looking at stuff like this and, you know, different armors and, and weapons. And it's like all this stuff, like I, you know, it's like, for a concept artist, I feel like it's the greatest job you could have. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, is... so actually, uh, going back to this sketch here, uh, you can see on the right where I have the layers actually, where I have one layer where it's working uh, as a solid piece. And then uh, I have another layer on top where um, I can brush in a different color and then I can adjust that color without affecting the previous color that I've put in. So that like that kind of stuff like really helps a lot. Yes, yeah, so able to do that. You're kind of creating two tones here, and then you can you can independently adjust those tones. Like say you want it to be more red, or you want it to be more yellow, or purple, or whatever. You're not you're not adjusting that both those colors at the same time. Yes. So it's it's it's, it's having having that power to be able to kind of like go back and forth and and you know do that and then and especially in this particular case where because you know uh, the diablo uh four camera the way you're going to see this boss i wanted to make sure that i only work with two tones which is basically like a warm color and a cool color just so that like you know from far away you know especially if i have just one that one hit of warm color and have it surround with co cool colors will kind of help kind of like give it that like nice pop yeah, you know, we talk about the, um, you know, at this stage, right, like the two things we talk about are silhouette and readability, right? Like, we're not really like, we're going to, we're going to show what it looks like when we start detailing. And I think people always love it when they see the detailing, because you really see like, oh my gosh, the, you know, the way you guys render things is really beautiful. Um, but really, the, the impression and the, and the, the design is the silhouette and the, the, that, that first readability, which is that, you know, like the sort of value and color on, on, on the monster, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, I think like it's like the, the basic start of it is how well does this creature read in like that fraction of a second when you first see it. So like breaking it down in values and simple readable shapes is important. And then we can worry about the details after, you know, it has to read strong from like the basic idea. Yeah, and um, you know, uh, uh, a really good artist, I, I heard uh, them say this one time that essentially color is really just like, it's like the cherry on top, but it's like value is, is the most important, one of the most important things besides shape, like besides the silhouette. Do you, do you feel that's true? Uh, yes, yes, it's definitely like, I think like uh, shape and silhouette are super important. Because, you know, and when we talk about value, you know, if you look at that bottom drawing, you can see how it's much darker at the bottom, right? Like you want this feeling that it's sort of like this, the, there's a gradation of value from top to bottom, right? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, you definitely want it to feel like it's, uh, it exists in the world and it feels like it, it, it fits in there. Do you ever do this? I, I, I find I, I, I do this all the time. I call it the squint test. Do you, do you ever squint at your designs? Uh, yes, actually, uh, when you, you see, you'll see it like as I'm, so I have like, I, I don't have it here, but I have a, Photoshop has this ability to open up another document, uh, the same exact document, and I have it off to, because I work with two monitors. That's right. So one monitor will have my reference images and yeah. also will have like the navigator or like a, another document, another duplicate doc, document of this, and it'll be zoomed out. Yeah. So I'm constantly looking that, at that version as well, so I can see how well the shapes are reading from that distance. Yeah, that's a very common practice with concept artists uh, or just artists who work digitally is you want to have that small version kind of like, and they, I think in Photoshop they call it the navigator, which is really just a, it just gives you a, another version, another image of the same document, but you're not zoomed in. Like if you're rendering, you can, you can kind of see it from like a distance. Right. What was that? Did we have a, did we something fall over? We're recording from home, so who knows what could happen at any given moment. Yeah, we are recording from home. <laughs> This is cool. So I, I, I the, uh, so uh, uh, the creature on the left. So, you, what are you, what are you thinking about for the materials? Are you thinking about like, is it like glossy? Is it, is it armor? Is it, you know, like, is it all soft and gooey? Like, or like, what are the different materials that you're starting to think about? Uh, yeah. So here, I'm actually just, you know, pulling, looking at the reference that I have. And so in this one, I had a, a I think a giant desert centipede. And so for this one, I'm literally just uh, thinking about like a hard carapace like surface. And then because it's the hard surface, I want I wanted the 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 bloated egg sac to be gooey and stretchy and translucent. 
I love how, you know, it's interesting. I think a lot of people find this interesting how quickly you're brushing this in with this big brush, right? You're not using a, you're not using a small little detail brush. You're using, uh, you're using something that has a pretty large uh, shape to it, right? Um, why is that? Uh, so I think especially in this stage, it's super important not to get caught up in detail because we are just, you know, everything's just kind of being laid in. And so you're making like big decisions. And actually, if you're, if you're, if your big broad decisions are, uh, I guess like in this case, well thought out and it works, then the detail you put on top just kind of helps. It's almost like it should support that, you know, those big decisions you make in the beginning. Yeah, it's, uh... yeah. So here I'm just like, you know, I, I mean, I mean, I, I try to be accurate, but at the same time, I think, there, you know, I just like, hey, I just need to add this dark value so that I can find a way to frame, um, you know, like the, the, the focal point of this creature. Yeah, because you're also starting to see what we call negative space, right? Which is the, yes. the, the you know, you're kind of getting a sense of even though this is a still image and this thing will move around, but you're 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 you're, you're seeing the opportunities for like how these shapes are going to play with one another. Uh, yeah, so I think like part of like designing is also not also being aware of not only the positive shape, but also the negative shape. And I think this is part of the reason why this for me, the silhouette has a creepiness feel to it is because of all the spindly fingers that's, you know, that's being made by the negative shapes because it kind of has this like, um, I, I think just a lot of these broken bits and pieces in between um, kind of help accentuate the, you know, the the quality of a spindly, spidery thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you just did something interesting there. You you copied the you copied your layer, right? Yes. Uh, so here I'm just gonna put it in a lineup, just because though, because I, I, you know after I do this uh, initial sketch here, I presented it to the concept team, and we had like kind of a little bit like a mini jam session where uh because i know those guys are busy as well with their own tasks so it's like hey you know can we just talk about this design and then what do you guys think you know which is uh, you know normal part of the, the the everyday working process where you're always getting feedback so even in this particular demo you know i wanted to make sure i got feedback um so yeah i presented it to them and we idea jam for a little bit and i think like later on you see me actually combine two of the ideas because like they were kind of like 50 50 where they like one, the you know the pros and cons of one design yeah. versus the other. I I feel like that's like a classic art director move too, right? Like it's like <laughs> it's it's like art director one hundred and one is like yeah, just say you know I like the legs on this guy. Could we take the head from that guy and put it on here? And you, my job, <laughs> which is has done. happened, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, like a design, it, it, it is literally that. I mean, you're you're iterating uh, uh, a design. So you're I mean, as a concept artist, that should be expected where you're like, hey, these are my different ideas. And then, you know, what, what do you guys like about it? What can I take from one idea to the other? And can I mix and match? You know, um, yes, definitely. I think as a concept artist, that's I would say that's like one of the main things that you should be aware of. <laughs> Yeah. And you're, you're also, you know, I mean, we, we, you know, because we are always presenting things, right? Like we're always, uh, w you know, w w we're always showing things to people. And so kind of, I see what you're doing here, which is like, you're kind of getting this ready to present a little bit. You're, you're getting this, re you're getting things positioned and scaled because you don't want people to take the wrong thing away. Like you've presented enough things to know it matters, right? Presentation and sort of like the, the quality of like how things are lined up and just like the, the formatting of the image. Like this is a, uh, talk about that process a little bit. Uh, yeah. So it's pretty important to have a presentable piece, you know, at the end. Cause I mean, in this particular case, um, you know, I, I only, had, I only was able to come up with four ideas, but I mean, like, I think it was enough to be able to show a variety. Um, and then being able to present it so that like, uh, you know, we can kind of look at one design and then move our, you know, from the left side and then, the, and then move to the right. And so you're almost like looking at each individual design separately and then people can comment and it kind of leaves like room for discussion. Um, you know, and then I, I think I'm going to, you know, write like a, a, B, C and D. And so there's like, people can be, so when we present it, people can be like, Hey, I like the legs on C. Can we combine that? 
Like, how can we use the legs from C and combine that with B uh, or vice versa? Um, so yeah, I think presentation is super important because um, it's definitely like, uh, you know, because getting that feedback loop, you know, as you progress, especially when you start towards the end where you're going to start painting it, where like it's harder to make changes, you know, when you start to get really detailed and rendered. So now at this point of the drawings, you know, you just put the labels on there. Um, did you have a favorite? Did you have one that you felt more more uh, excited about than another? Uh, I think for me, I, re I felt like uh, A and B were both really strong for me because I felt like the like oh, the initial the initial designs of C and D felt like it was already something I've seen before. Mm -hmm. And so, like I love Davey. I'm always thinking in my head, like pushing that boundary. How can I present like a, a spider boss? Yeah. But it presented in a new way where most people haven't experienced it. Um, and so like, yeah, I like A, but I love the the possibility of how B moves, <laughs> so. Sure, yeah. Uh, what was the, uh, did you, did, uh, the, well, we haven't put this through all the feedback loops, so you haven't gotten the animator. I, I did not put it through with the designers, so yeah, yeah. I don't know what they would say. <laughs> yeah. But you I know, mean, this is also just one day's worth of work, right? Because yeah, yeah. this was like how, you know, from here, it would go through like the you know where we would sit down and we would all discuss it and so like the from here it could uh it could spawn 10 other ideas you know um and, and that that is typically what happens right like i feel like if we were doing this like you know like i would probably look at this and i would ask some questions about you know like i love the idea of doing you know kind of because i agree i actually think like c you know kind of reminds me of something i've seen before um, but I also do love that moment, that idea that maybe like, hey, if we go with this detached idea where she becomes really agile uh, w w at, at like stage two, then it's like it's a great the, the idea of having that like abdomen and then a body being able to detach those two things is, is like a really <laughs> yeah. cool idea. So, you know, like, could we explore that? Like, you know, kind of like take that idea and the, and then explore that more to you know, like, like, see how, how can we make it our own? How can we make it, you know, feel true to Diablo? Yep. I think from that point, you would just, we would just end up, or I would end up just doing more sketches of like, oh, let's go explore that idea of how what does it look like when the sack does explode? You know, the, what does this form, this new form might look like? Did the sack explode or did the creature rip from the sack? Like, I think for me, like, I would have loved to see, um, a creature where the sack have kind of exploded and now you're just fighting this like rib caged mm -hmm. like creature <laughs> well, you know you know it's like the second part yeah that could totally work too where there's like you know like on b especially if we added more weight to the to the sack part right like there's there could be like at some point that explodes and now it's that weight is gone and so now it's like much more faster and agile so oh you, you, oh yeah see like that's i didn't even think about that yeah so now like the players, like the, the gameplay rhythm is all of a sudden now it's like, you have to change it from the beginning of the fight. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah, cause like, I, I love those kinds of fights where it's like, you know, the, the you know, it's, it's it, you don't predict it. Like, uh, like it's hard to predict because it feels like, oh, this feels familiar. And then it's like, oh, cause I fought big, you know, uh, uh, bosses that, that kind of lurch around, but then all of a sudden it's like, you know, becomes really fast and agile. Um, you know, it's like contrast. Like I always feel like contrast always makes everything yep. more interesting. Absolutely. Um, here, I'm just kind of putting like notes that I thought was like interesting for me. Like, for example, like A, I thought it was an interesting design, but I wasn't sure how it might fight. So I'm kind of thinking about gameplay, you know, like how would this guy fight? Like I wasn't sure as I saw, so I wrote, is it, could it be magic? Or it could be like a, it could be, it would spit venom at you. Um, I said it floats to move. Um, what I meant was like it would it would be like strung up by like webbing, mm -hmm. and it would feel like it's like floating through the the gameplay, you know, the fights the fight space, um, you know. And then for B, I think I just kept talking about um, the idea that it could move like a centipede. Yeah, I love the idea of that the tail like whipping around. Um, it could like rear up and like spit venom. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like a fast attack kind of boss. Yeah, I love the notes. You know, I think that it's something that I've, I've noticed you do in a lot of your designs. Like you'll add those creative notes because 
a lot of times these concepts, they, you know, like you may not be there to present it, right? Yep. And it could, so, be, could be something when, somebody just sees. And so you, you want to have that context there. Yeah. So I always like putting like, uh, like later on in the final piece, I put like flavored text to kind of help drive uh, the idea that I had in my head. Uh, and so same thing here, I'm just writing notes because I think it's important to kind of add notes um, so that like it helps, maybe helps like start a conversation. You know, maybe another designer might be thinking the same thing or they might disagree, you know, just uh, just to kind of start like some kind of conversation uh, with the design. So and nothing too detailed, you know, it's most like I want to keep it open so that when people see it, they can kind of like, you know, the, the sketch is loose, the color layings are loose, nothing's like. Uh, nothing is uh, final so that like, you know, it's easy to like, hey, you know, like we can change stuff around. Yeah. Nobody feels bad because it's like, oh, it looks like you spent a lot of time on this. You know, like little, <laughs> yeah. I feel bad. I don't want to. You know, it, it is funny. I do feel I like I feel like in, um, you know, we, we, we talk about like, you know, the big reveal is always kind of like we try to avoid that where, you know, it's like no you know you you try to reveal this like super rendered polished thing that nobody has seen or given feedback on because then it's like oh like oh you spent a lot <laughs> yeah. of time on this and i have i have i have thoughts right yeah i think it's super important to see like for for the desire the people in you know in the team to see this initial phase so that they, they can give feedback because you don't want to be um working on something you know, and then like a week goes by and then nobody sees it. And then all of a sudden, like, that's not what we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what you know, you like, you know, you had no one, you know, you had this, you know, I had this opportunity to show it. So um, I think it's important to get feedback early. Well, it's, uh, you know, kind of what you said. I mean, it, it's it, it keeps it loose enough where also, you know, and, and this happens all the time at Blizzard where it's like, you know, that great idea could come from anywhere and you, you, you want the drawing to feel like it's open enough and the, the process is open enough where somebody could introduce something like, you know, we just mm -hmm. talked about like, oh yeah, the, you know, maybe the, the top part's a lot fatter and, and, you know, it, it has this two stage part. And, uh, you know, so, so like we would, you know, that, that like keep it flexible. So like, you know, things can change, right? Like nothing right. is precious. Like, I feel like a, I've heard you talk about this a couple of times, but like, you know, don't get too attached or don't, don't make it so precious that nobody can add anything because yeah. that's the, the coolest thing about this job is that we get to collaborate with all these incredibly talented people and passionate people. And, you know, they get to bring their ideas to it. So I think like the concept team, we always try to feel like, you know, like we want to provide a service to the team, which is, you know, we are going to take ideas from the team, plus them. We talk about that a lot, just like plussing an idea that they, they have, um, you know, and, uh, you know, and that's really, I think it's one of the most critical parts of what makes Blizzard unique. Yep, absolutely. It's definitely, I think, that collaboration and just getting other people's input to kind of help, you know, drive the design. All right, Rob. Well, this concludes the first part of a two-part series. This is, like I said, you know, I, I really wasn't sure when we talked about this what this would feel like, but I'm really happy that we're doing this because it really does feel like we get to really pull back the curtain and show people uh, a part of this uh, of this job that we do that mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. they, that is is kind of hard to hard to to, to see because I think they just see the finished beautiful art, right? And and uh, and and that's always uh that's always uh it, it's not it's not how it works really it's not like you just sit down and do that it's no. <laughs> a it, it's a process it's definitely a process yeah it's definitely a process and like you know uh when i go when you know the past bliss cons that i've gone to that's always like one of the biggest questions i get is like how do you do this and so i think for me it's just important to be able to share kind of how to take something from you know that was in your head and then kind of like be able to put it out and eventually present it to, you know, people. Yeah. Well, you know, this was awesome, Rob. Uh, so, you know, if you enjoyed this, we are going to do part two of this, uh, uh, shortly and you'll get to see how Rob finished uh, this piece. Rob, which one of these did you pick for your, for your, uh, for your final, uh, your final render? So the concept team consensus was, taking A because they love the, the the idea that A just feels different from all the other designs they've seen. 
so they like a but they also love the the feet and all the little you know sp spindly things of b and so i ended up combining a and b all right well that's <laughs> so, awesome because i mean you can still have it where it can still move and slither around like b and then it would just rear up into this you know you know the the, the, the way you would see a so well, you're going to get to see it come to life here in the next segment. Um, so, uh, you know, thank you for tuning in and, and uh, listening to our Artists at Work series. Um, and uh, uh, thank you so much. Cool. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>